I'm Roslyn Carita, and today on our show, History and Heritage, we're going to do something a little different. Behind me, you can see a group of artists. These are local, professional artists right here in Clarksville. We're going to have an opportunity to look at some of their work as they work, and there's a gallery right here at the L&N Depot that's free and open to the public. Stay with us. We'll do some more history and heritage and art. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. Welcome back. I am actually standing in the l &N train depot and thanks to Patsy Sharp and other folks, this became, has really many uses now. You've seen the museum, but we also have an art gallery and a room where artists can actually work. So Patsy, you know, I, I've known you for a long time. You're an artist. She is, works in so many media, you wouldn't even believe it. But this group, works in what media? Uh, basically water media. We are all members of the Tennessee Watercolor Society and uh, which you have to work in water media to be in their shows. That's how I met Hilda from Waverly and uh, Janet from Erin. Polly uh, is out in the Sango area and Eunice also in the Sango area and uh, well, I knew Eunice only before the Watercolor Society and through um, uh, through art then. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a regional watercolor society show here. And, and that's not to be taken lightly. To have a regional show, you have to, it's not like you just say, okay, we're gonna have a regional show. I mean, you had to qualify or ha how does that work? Well, actually, uh, I have a good friend who is uh, the regional director, a regional contact that lives in Brentwood. And she, I was talking to her one day about watercolor society things and she said you know we don't have much of a presence in Clarksville she said could you do something about that and I said I think I can and so with a lot of work she did and and that's how they actually were able to to host the regional um, show yeah through arts and heritage Ellen Canervo orchestrated the use of the train station the first time our third annual show will be coming up in October of this year. And that'll be publicized so that yes. people could could come. Yes. Um, okay, so tell us a little bit about what you're doing right here and then let's go around and look at each artist and let them introduce themselves and tell us just a little bit about their work. How does okay, that sound? That sounds good. Okay. Um, Starting my, with you. Okay, this is strictly watercolor, transparent watercolor. Um, it's on a paper called Twin Rocker Paper. Twin and Rocker. Okay. It, it's an expensive watercolor paper. I did a workshop with Janet and this artist that we worked with, that worked with us, taught us to do this with very expensive sable brushes that we got afterwards. And it's to, he showed us a, a technique of making bark and it's smooth when you touch it, but it doesn't look smooth. No, it, it doesn't has a look lot smooth. of texture. It looks like uh, it's very rough. I yeah. mean, I feel like I could, I don't want to touch anything, but I feel like if I touch that, I would feel yeah, bark. You, you feel the, the roughness of the bark, and I fell in love with this technique, and, and you have to have the materials that he used. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very time consuming, very slow, because I will build and build and build these layers of color 
until I have a tree trunk that looks like you can touch rough bark and the foliage behind it. Mm. So do you work, uh, I know that you have a studio at home and, yes. and you work at home, but this group, how often do you all meet here to work? Every Tuesday. Okay. Every, Every Tuesday. Tuesday. And I'm seeing all this color over here. You want to take us over yes. here and introduce us? This is uh, Miss Hilda Wade. And she lives in Waverly now. So you drive a good piece uh -huh. to uh -huh. get here. Yes, uh -huh. A fur piece, as we say. <laughs> fur, piece. <laughs> fur piece. Fur piece. This is great. Can I hold it up just a little uh, bit? Yes. Uh -huh. Take a look at this color. I love red. <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been doing water, watercolor? Uh, actually, watercolor, not very long. Mm -hmm. I started out with the oils and then switched over to acrylics. And I tried watercolor a time or two, and then I wind up going back to the acrylic. But um, I went. I've been to two or three workshops at Trenton, <laughs> and that, and that was watercolor. So you all have both mentioned workshops. Wow. So it's not like you just were born with this God-given talent and you <laughs> said, "Okay, I can do this." You actually take classes. Right. You work. You improve, as you said, techniques mm -hmm. and learn. So. You, um, I'm sure that you show your work in places, and do you sell your work as well? <laughs> well, I don't show very much. I'm, I'm a retired teacher, art teacher, and uh, I've just not done much with my art since I, all the time I was teaching, I thought, when I stop teaching, I'm going to really do some, right. really do some art myself, but other things interfere. And Life. Right. 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 Like but that. she's working now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Working now. And this is this having this group gives you an opportunity. Oh, it does. And, and it kind of marks out the time. I mean, mm -hmm. all of us say, "Oh, I'm going to do this," right. but we know that on Tuesday, you're going to meet with other folks. And uh, I have to plan. You know, what am I going to do? What am I going to take? Right. Right. And it does keep me interested in, in working. You right. Know? So um, I do plan. Two shows up now, so I mean, Good. That's, that is what is, and the friendship, and the and her piece sold at the Watercolor Society. Show. Very good. See, you just are too humble. Yes. You did sell a piece. Good for you. Well, I'm not, I, should I tell you who sold, who bought it? You can. Patsy bought it. Uh, I fell in love with it. Well, I'm just absolutely. And fell actually, in love that's with a it. great compliment because someone with her taste and her ability it to is. purchase something that is very meaningful. It, it is because. Uh, she does such super realistic work, yeah. and, and mine, you know, gets a little. <laughs> oh, I think this is so. pretty abstract. Right. This is beautiful. So, so. Well, thank you. And so you will be showing work at she the has. She has in work. the gallery, yes, and so. we are going to go and take a look at the gallery where this kind of work by these artists and others is hung, and people can come in. You can look at it, and you can buy it. So this is beautiful, I, and I love this color. And you know, every one of you has a different story. Um, I love knowing that you are an art teacher. Um, you bring so much. My, one of my kids was very artistic, and you know, his art teacher made such a difference in his life. Very positive. And I wanted to come over here and take a look because there's a story that, um, that we have going on with some of this art. Um, Patsy, if you want to go ahead and do the introduction, and maybe you could stand up and show us uh, what we have going on over here. This is Polly Elliott, and she is a new friend and artist in our group, and um, she was a trauma nurse for 29 years. But Worked study? for Dr. Ted yes. McCurdy for 18. I'll be darned. Studied. I'm a nurse too. I know you are. <laughs> All of us nurses recognize each other, but I unfortunately don't have this talent. Uh, show us, I briefly had an opportunity to look at a few things, and I want to share with you what she's working on. I love this concept. Let me know if I can help hold something okay, up for you. Let's see. Let me get a few things out of the way. This <laughs> is. Um, I've been working, I'm not, these are not completed. This is a picture of a man and lady in their youth walking down a lane. 
And this is a follow-up picture. They're in their golden years. They're walking down a lane again. So, and uh, I, I, my medium is usually acrylic, but I use a lot of earth. I will go outside and you know crimson uh, those um, boysenberry. I'll get them and mash them up. They make the most beautiful crimson color. How and wonderful! I use um, I have used clay dirt for mountains. And you actually use it, mix it in with your paint so that you have I have gritty. mixed it alone, I sift it and then, you know, um, I've used it alone and I have mixed it in with paint. So there's no limit to the creativity. You don't have to just use the paint as it comes. You, you do things. And I, I want you to hold that up again. Oh, sure. I'll, I'll tell you what struck me was that you have the young couple in the springtime. Yes. And you have the older couple, um, as you said, in their golden years, yes. placed in the fall. And I, I love that touch of it. The, you. You, you feel it. Um, Your sentiment. Yeah, the sentiment, exactly. Beautiful. Thank you. And so how long have you been work, how long have you been an artist besides being a nurse? Well, um, I think my interest in art started when I was in uh, grade school, I would say about the seventh grade. Ah, and did you have art teachers? Um, we did have a teacher that, uh, that taught us some art. And then in high school, I took art. Good and, for you. And, uh, I was always afraid to take art because... Oh, I, no, I loved it. You know, I, It was I'm, like playtime for me. How wonderful. I, I never have had that ability, so I sort of wanted to take it, but the truth is I was afraid to. <laughs> I love this. This looks like a great story. Um, I lived in Corpus Christi, Texas for... So did I. ...for 17 years, and... Um, I've always had an interest in horses and um, just uh, trying to get the gait of their, when they're walking, mm -hmm. you know, their gait. And so uh, I, ha that, I haven't nailed that yet, but I'm going to. I love it. That, you, you know, I would not have um, really focused on something so specific as the gait of a horse, but I can see that that's a very difficult that movement is very difficult to capture. And I think you certainly did capture it Thank here. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so uh, So much. do you have things hanging in the gallery that I we'll do. see? Excellent. I do. Well, we'll, we will see that. Oh. Thank you. And I see you are very prolific over here. You're working yeah. on a lot of, lot of projects. Yes. Oops. This is Eunice Kern. She's our resident plein air painter. Now say that again. Plain air. She paints outdoors. She goes oh, outdoors okay. for the okay. outdoor shots and she does a, many varied workshops oh. in Europe and she travels to oh, paint. Oh really? This is some of the sunsets or sunrises I did. Oh beautiful. This Let's, is in Austria. So you, you do really seriously travel. Yes I do. Oh my goodness and look at this. I, I hesitate to touch them. Is it, and, and so clearly, I, I think that this looks, you know, the, these are, when I think of watercolor, this is the kind of a look that I, that I visualize. Um, gosh, these are beautiful colors. So when you go to, when you travel, I don't know if I can put this in front of it. Yes. I, I hesitate to, I don't know anything about how to take care of it. Um, so when you go to the, when you travel like this, do you, you go to workshops while you're there or? Well, we have a leader. His name is Timothy Clark. We always go to a, a destination. Uh -huh. And um, then we travel. Uh, for example, next spring we're going to the Pyrenees. So does, does, is this a group of folks that uh, are members of the watercolor society no, across no. the country or well that we are from across the country okay an independent group so you all know each other yes. or you you all have something in common about the kind of art the kind of watercolor okay and you have things in the gallery in here too yes, they do. so what is your background just out of curiosity were you an art teacher or a nurse uh, or no, I, I'm basically, I, I, my background is musician. Music. Oh, really? So, see, you're an artist. Tell me about your musical background. I'm, I'm a church musician. I play the organ. Ah, oh, how wonderful. And I used to conduct choirs. 
Wow, so and you're only working with young children, uh, preschoolers, in a small singing group in church. And that adds so much richness to their lives. That is wonderful. I love to hear this. And my goal, or my husband works with me, and our goal is to plant the seed of music in their heart. How nicely you say that. How beautiful. Oh, and you, you obviously are planting a lot of seeds of beauty with this, with this medium, too. Beautiful. Thank you. You're very welcome. And we're going to take a look at what you have hanging in the gallery in a minute. Um, and, you know, I should have come to you first, um, <laughs> and I don't know how that happened. She is in a wheelchair. God bless her. She stayed here so that we could work and, and, and talk. And Patsy, you want to introduce her? And yes, this is Janet Ironside Feltz. <laughs> Uh, Ironside being a joke because she is in uh, a, a wheelchair uh, and she, because she and had a broken leg. Yes, yeah, she had a broken ankle. Uh, I had a and, broken uh, leg and a broken ankle. Oh, oh. You, you broke, my I didn't goodness. know you broke too. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, um, anyway, she, she's a real trooper Yeah. <laughs> and came out for this and really wanted to come out for this. She's been cooped up at home for a while. Oh. <laughs> so how long have you been an artist? Well, I was one of those kids that have, I've always drawn. I love to draw. And um, when I was in grammar school, of course, the teachers encouraged me. And then I wanted to go to college and be a professional artist, so I was an art teacher. Okay, so you did study art in school mm -hmm. all the way. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. And so did you teach art here in Clarksville? I never taught in Clarksville. I taught three years in Nashville, and then we went to Georgia and I taught 18 years there. I was also a graphic artist for the state of Tennessee. Really? How wonderful. Um, I, I work with a lot of the folks in that department mm -hmm. uh, with different projects, so I, we probably know some same people. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Well, and it looks like you're working, uh-oh, and I can feel that this is wet. Well, it is wet, but it's acrylic. It's easily painted back up. Okay. <laughs> See, I told you I was hesitant to pick anything up, and I did the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, and, and I work with an iPad. Okay, now see how modern. I've um, got a photograph, I take my own photograph. Okay, so this is not a copy of another artwork, it's mm -hmm. a copy from a photograph, photograph that you that did. And I'm gonna come around this, this is side. On the is it? Mm -hmm. yes. So you took the photograph, so clearly you do all sorts of, I mean, just when you're an artist, you've just got it, you know? <laughs> I do I, enjoy the part of it, yes. Ah, and do you have some special kind of equipment that you use for photography, or did you take that with your iPhone? No, I, I do have a, a, a digital uh, camera, a uh, pretty nice camera. Uh huh. Something I could probably lenses. never work. Good. With a few lenses, I do take for photography at Austin P. <laughs> Good. So um, uh, I enjoy the photography part and the painting part. Mm -hmm. So. This is wonderful. So, have you? Do you have things hung in the gallery as yes, well? Yes, I'm mostly drawing in the gallery, but one watercolor. Okay. All right. So we've had an opportunity to meet some local professional artists, and now we're going to take you into the gallery so you can see work that they have hung. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Change how children in your community grow. Our children need us more than ever. Donate or volunteer. BigBrothersBigSisters.org Have you ever been hungry, worried about where you're going to get your next meal? Loaves and Fishes is an organization feeding the hungry. Primarily through volunteer efforts and donations, we are able to accomplish this mission. Loaves and Fishes provides a midday meal Monday through Saturday year-round. We provide food to agencies helping the needy through our distribution program. If you would like to donate, get involved, or for more information, you can find us on the web at www.loavesandfishestn.org. Please help us with our mission of feeding the hungry. Will you become a guardian angel? The Humane Society has been saving lives and helping families since 1968. We are an independently operated nonprofit organization and the strength of our programs rely solely on donations and grants. Your donation will allow us to save animals from the local county shelter, as well as provide low-cost spay, neuter vouchers, and more. All of our programs are geared toward providing families with options that prevent them from surrendering personal or found pets, which might otherwise be euthanized at a shelter. Please be a guardian angel today.
Welcome back. Patsy Sharp and I are going to show you this gallery, but really, in a lot of ways, this gallery is Patsy's baby, and I want you to just kind of tell us just a little bit of the history of this gallery. Okay, the train station has always been close to my heart, and it has been empty and ill, not, not used, and ill-used. And as we were painting here, and, and after the Tennessee Watercolor Society came in, and the Nashville artist raved about the beautiful train station and what a venue, I went to the Historical Society Board and asked if we could create a gallery atmosphere, a gallery here for the train in the train station to showcase our work, which would help us, give us a place to be, and enhance the train station and bring people into it more than mm -hmm. it had been. And it really enhances all of Clarksville because it does. we have many artists here. Yes, it does. So you've done great work. And we're going to just kind of walk around and take okay. a look. And we have our artists stationed by their work so that we can sort of put the name with the, okay. with the style. Uh, so here we are, and now you can really see this broken leg, God love her, uh, but she is hanging with us. So, do you want to just tell us? Well, well this, this is, is my work. <laughs> okay, this is Patsy. This piece is ours. These are mine. Patsy's. And Patsy um, works in every medium under the sun. She is so talented. But these are watercolors. Watercolors with the exception of that one, which is a watercolor pastel. Okay. And then over here, we have Janet's work, uh, Days Gone By. This is a pen and ink, this is a charcoal, and this is a, a mixture of charcoal and pastel. Okay, and these are on display so that people can see them and appreciate them. And I see that you would part with your work if someone wanted to buy it. <laughs> All right. And you have these hung beautifully. I mean, this is a really an old room and it's gorgeous. I mean, this really looks like a gallery. We pride ourselves on our professionalism. Well, and you should. Um, we wanted this to be a gallery atmosphere where people could come and sit, and I, I see enjoy you, mm -hmm. the art, contemplate what they're seeing. This is a mixture of all of our paintings. Uh, again, uh, here's a, just, a couple of works that are yours. Mm -hmm. This and is Janet. This is an award winner, as a matter of fact. Okay. She now, won an award at Riverfest. Okay, this so this is Janet's work, and this was an award winner. An award winner. And, and so there are lots of competitions, or do we call it a competition? or a? Uh, well, there are different exhibits that you can enter, and all of us have been juried in and have won awards. So we so are. So this is a very august group of folks. Yes. And here, golly, that one really catches your eye. That's something that we all you, can identify with. Uh, this is Polly's work. This was done with makeup, unused makeup and earth. How creative. Okay. Makeup and, and earth. And that is far away. And um, it was just something that I started uh, doing one day and had some unused makeup, eyeshadow. Of course, we know what this is. John John. Um, I did not name it John John, I named it an art day for a child. Mm. This is um, just a creek scene that I love. I, you know, I love creeks. And, uh, it's titled Where I Want to Live. <laughs> and you have, make the magic in it. I have one more over here that is just a, it's a floral. Thing. This is completely different. I mean, just the yes. style is very different. I'm just kind of all over the place with, with what I, with the painting that I do. Well, I don't know that we call it all over the place. I'd say that it's broad spectrum, that, Thank that you. you can do anything. Thank I love this. That just is bright, colorful. Thank you. Oh. And then we have another couple of groups over here. Um, let's take a look and see what we have, Hilda. I'm telling you, this looks, this is so modern and so contemporary. My eye was really drawn to this. Well, thank you. I, I, as I said, I mentioned the workshop in Trenton, and that's when I found about the liquid watercolors. Okay. And that's what these are, liquid watercolors, and you use uh, webbing, like you decorate for Halloween. Okay. Uh, and stretch that and get just get the effect. So it's got really stuff in it. It's not. No, it's it's. I take it off after it dries. I just I stretch. Ah. Strand. Okay. So there are a lot of different kinds of techniques. You know, it's not just that you paint. I mean, I, I love that. You have 
kind of like the makeup, you come up with some other way. Yeah. Uh, Here's, uh, the, the liquid watercolors, I love color, and the liquid watercolors are just so beautiful to me. Yeah, you know, just, those are gorgeous. Really. They do. And then again, lots of marvelous color. Was this the same technique same of the thing webbing? Thing. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and it's called Second Day Water and Firmament? Mm -hmm. From the Bible. <laughs> I love it. I, how, how marvelous. And over here, Sixth Day, Male and Female. Wow. I mean, this is so much beautiful color. Well, thank you. Ah, gorgeous. I really enjoyed this. I can tell you do. And then over here, um, we have, Eunice has, I know you have several pieces here, but tell us about these. Okay, these two pieces, the, the one on each end, are uh, painted on silk. Oh, so and not on paper. Not on paper. Or is it white silk? Yes, or? it's okay. white silk to start with. And where do you get white silk? Do you buy it at we the... vendors. Okay. You buy it. Okay. Um, this is beautiful. Then, then this is the watercolor um, of, of the train that goes from Durango to Silverton in Colorado. Ah, again, yes. we see your travels in, in your yes. work. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you paint on silk, um, I would guess that maybe you also make scarves. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm wearing one and I can show you over here. That okay, and so you're wearing, let me take a look at this. So you actually made, you painted this. Can I? Sure. So it was white silk. It starts as white silk, and I use dyes. Uh -huh. Silk dye. You got it. There you go. <laughs> How and this? This is just. A, this happens to be um, one of my testing cloths. Oh. <laughs> How clever you are! Well, you have you have to try and see if you have the right color sometime. And so that's um, it's a hodgepodge of. Design. How beautiful. So do you sell your scarves yes, as well? I, I did notice that we had one over there yes. that it looked like that was for sale. What could be better than to have a scarf that not only is handmade but that you know who made it? And they're oh. one of a kind. Absolutely one of a kind. by the artist. And I saw a signature somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> uh, let's see. There it is. There it is, signed by the artist. Wow. <laughs> so this gives us a, a sampling of, of the art that is in the gallery. Now, does this change from time to time? We will keep it fresh. It will always be different. We had recently changed out, so it, we, we will change out often. So you can come every week if you want to, probably, and see and something see different. different. Okay, mm -hmm. and isn't there also a section uh, here at the train station that has art from the high schools? Yes. The, the, the other room that we were painting in is the community art section. Okay. And uh, there will only be a few months out of the year that that will not be used and when it's not used we will move into that room also. So there will always be art. Always be art here. Okay. Um, do you have other members of this group? I think you had mentioned that there there are other members that kind of the group is Actually, fluid. People um, come and go. No, and no, no. Th this There's is kind of the solid five, group right we now. We are the five train station art all right. artists. So thank you all so much for for sharing this with us. And Patsy, uh, again, this is free and open to the it's public. It's free and open to the public to look. <laughs> right, to look. And if you choose to, you can to make purchase, buy. Yes. You can purchase. And, and then a, a commission, we pay a commission to the train to the Historical Society in, in support of the train station and their work. And that keeps us, um, keeps the, helps keep the train station alive. So a lot of folks who care about history in Clarksville have worked not only to save the train station, but to find uses for it that really contribute to our heritage. So I hope you've enjoyed this show today. It is our history and it is our heritage. Change how children in your community grow. Our children need us more than ever. 
donate or volunteer. BigBrothersBigSisters.org.